of the chain code and then we uh, give in the args and then the we put in this certificate and now we're essentially all good. So we've installed and instantiated this chain code on the peer and now we have to connect to this peer and to and to, and to run this uh, fab proxy to actually be able to use some Ethereum tooling such as Web3 and Remix to talk to this uh, smart contract and, and to this peer. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here I'm gonna quit this node session. Okay, so we're in the fabric chain code EVM. Um, and then here we'll do that same thing. So now um, what we want to do is we want to export some ver uh, environmental variables. So Fab3 needs to know our go path. Um, it needs to know what user, know what user we are, what port to connect to, um, what chain code ID to listen for, and what channel. So our, our channel is the my channel. Our port is 5000. And our user is user1. And then we already have our go path. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So here is here are the um, using Web three instructions. So this is what we'll be using, and then this is kind of the the, the all the environmental variables like the Fab three config, the user, the org, the channel, the chain code ID, and then the port. So let's go ahead and go and copy and paste that into here. Okay, so let's go. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and, and run. Um, we can run go build. Um, so we're targeting this uh, fab3 command, and that is is going to run our our main program. So again, um, if we look back into our actual uh, our actual project, um, what we just did is we told uh, go to go into fab3, and then into command, and then into main, and then it looks for all of these uh, environmental variables, and then it um, connects to the channel, um, and then it, cr it creates the Ethereum service, and, and, and it, it essentially starts this uh, fab proxy. Okay, so we've built that, and now in, we can do a bit dot slash bin and then fab three and that should uh, run starting fab three on port 5000 and then if we go to port 5000 um, we should be good to go let's see yeah cool um, so we're running our fab three everything looks good here now in another terminal window we can um, move this, start this again first thing we have to do is we have to install web three I've already done that but you just run an npm install um, and then you can see in the instructions here, we have uh, something like install web3 0.20.0. Um, I've already done that, so we can check. Um, after we do that, we'll start a node session. Um, so in our node session, we can go ahead and say uh, require web3, since we'll be needing to use that. Um, after that, a, we will we will use this uh, new we'll create a new web three instance and then we'll say to connect to localhost 5000 because that's where our, our fab proxy is running. And that's where we've implemented this uh, JSON RPC API that, that Ethereum can talk to. Um, cool. So now we can use some of the uh, web three uh, libraries, such as like the web three dot ETH, ETH dot accounts. Um, so we can check that. Um, cool. So we have our accounts. Let's go ahead and set our default account. So to set our default default account, we just um, we just do something like this. Um, and now we're ready to work with the smart contract. So let's go back into Remix. And what we have to do is we have to get the simple storage ABI. So the ABI is some metadata about the smart contract. So it, it essentially can check for things such as you know what are the inputs. Um, what kind of outputs are there? Um, what's the name of the function and things like that? So in our remix, um, we've already compiled, um, but we can we can refresh and we can check that again. Um, so we've uh, we can check our we can select our compiler version, but we can see here that anything in between four and zero point six is working. We have zero point five point one, and we've already compiled this, 
and we can see here all we have is a set and a get method and then in our ABI if we click on details we can see some of the metadata and then we can see our ABI and this is just our you know what's the name of the function what are the outputs um, is it payable is there gonna be a balance stuff like that so we'll go ahead and copy uh, copy that to clipboard so and then we'll actually um, uh, we'll we'll create a variable so simple storage ABI um, and then we can go ahead and paste all of this in um, and that should be okay so what we essentially what we did is we copied and pasted that ABI code into here and just set it into this variable and the next thing we have to do is actually get the bytecode so um, so we've set our ABI and then now we need our bytecode so simple uh, storage uh, byte code is equal to and then what we will do here I'm gonna um, so what we'll do is we can check our byte code and the details and this is this um, this thing for us so this is what why remix is really nice is we can go ahead and just grab the byte code from here and then paste it in into our node session we have our byte code now so at this point we've set our um, byte code and then now we want to um, we want to create a instance of the or we want to pass in and create an inst we want to pass in the ABI for the contract so it will say something like simple storage is equal to a three dot eth dot contract and then we're passing in the simple storage abi okay so we see our uh, we see our functions there so that looks good and now we actually want to create a new instance of that or we want to create a new instance of that contract so we have to um, use the contract dot new command so we can do something like this um, so our deployed contract is equal to uh, calling simple storage dot new passing in uh, on nothing and then the data or this is just going to be like the zero address and the data that we're sending is the bytecode um, cool so at this point we're ready to get our address so the way to do that is we can say my contract um, is equal to a uh, simple simple storage at and then we have to go ahead and get the address so the way to do that is um, get transaction get transaction receipt um, and then inside here in we have to check our deployed contract dot transaction hash and then contract address um, so you can go ahead and see that in our actual simple storage we have this um, contract and then in here we have a get transaction receipt um, and that's where we're gonna actually go ahead and get all of this um, information about our contract So I spelled deployed wrong. Um, cool. So we've gotten our contract address, and now we can interact with it. So let's go ahead and check something like uh, my contract dot get. Um, so this is not what we want, but we can use something like two number to actually see it. So we see that uh, the data is zero. So we can set it. So we can do something like set, and we can do eleven. Um, and then we can get get it and then that's that's we can get our contract um, again just one more quick example we can set to five five six six eight and then we'll get that number back awesome um, so what essentially what you learned today is you learned how to use the fab proxy so this is an implementation of the ethereum json rpc api and you've you've created this way to interact with a fabric node um, a fabric peer that's running this um, Ethereum smart contracts. So what this gives you is it still gives you the Hyperledger uh, consensus mechanism and the transaction flow, and it gives you some of those benefits of a permissioned uh, blockchain, such as how fast the transactions go through and then a customizable consensus algorithm. 
and it lets you it, it enables you to pick your vendor so you can pick ethereum um, you can pick uh, you know hyperledger since uh, since hyperledger can run these ethereum smart contracts and then there's a lot of cloud vendors that are able to run these as well um, so hopefully you learned something and again as always um, subscribe like and hope to see you next time thanks for watching